Hey folks, it's Maxi here and welcome to another TW 2020 video. We're on the WWF save and we have a roundup of what's happened in a very interesting month of March. As always, thanks for taking the time out to watch your video. You know the usual things if you want to get social and if you need any resources for the game, check in the description below. So what has exactly happened in the month of March? Well, a lot. Um, <laughs> where did I start with, really? So... We started our movement, as you know, bringing in Andre the Giant on our exclusive written deal. We then brought in Hulk Hogan, that's done, on an exclusive written deal. Obviously, Gino Hernandez was previously. Because of what the outcome on the Watcher was, I've recruited a lot more on written deals. I've stolen a lot of people from other companies, and we've also bought some companies over. The companies were bought over, I can't remember off the top of my head, but we will get that. Uh, once we're able to click on the news and, and go back and recall that. I believe it was two Canadian based companies because they were not too much uh, in terms of debt so we didn't have to pay too much for them. But we've, we've brought a lot of people in. There is one guy that I've brought in where I did need to fiddle about with Edward a wee bit but it was uh, just basically to take away some intention with Vince McMahon or he is a character of course so he would sign. That man being Bruiser Brody and uh, basically a few guys were freelance just went, well, the reality is, you signed for WWF eventually. We can get rid of that freelancing. So this one, the show that we're going to be documenting in the episode, I don't think we'll be beating that. But we are missing a lot of people. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I thought, basically, we had a lot of, we had a lot of good momentum. I thought, yeah, we'll have a lot of folk available for this show. I'll keep it on the Friday. Absolutely not, man. That's cost us Backland, Heenan, Henning, Lawler, as you can see, was signed, Jimmy Snooker, Larry Henning, Ollie Anderson, who was signed, Rennie Goulet, Rocky Johnson, who's back because of uh, we, we took over the company and brought him back, uh, and Tommy Rich as well. So a massively depleted roster, but we should still have a solid show, hopefully, that should still make us a good bit of money and gain pop. Um, we basically had to throw the kitchen sink to get Bruiser Brody as well, so. He did cost a lot, but yeah, it's time to step down and get the finger out and basically go to war. So we'll book the show anyway, let you see what we've put together and hopefully we can get another sell out and get another show that increases our pop in many places. So we're on pay-per-view, let's crack on, let's see how today's show goes. So 50,000 we got the sell out and we started out with uh, about the had great heat. And decent wrestling as David Schultz defeated Hector Guerrero in 10.33 by pinfall with the pile driver following interference from Sherry Martel. A 67 overall, pretty decent opener, got the show off to a strong start. I was a bit iffy putting these two together, didn't think it scored too heavily, but he gained some momentum for David Schultz and yeah, well overall 67 is impressive. Fear opening contest. And then we had a promo, just then basically bragging they'd won, which was a 42. Next up, we had a bout between a new, a new recruit from one of the companies we'd signed and Tito Santara, that man being Phil Lafon, who eventually would make his way to the World Wrestling Federation. And it was about that had a decent reaction from the crowd, but subpar wrestling. And Tito Santana picks up the win in 8.55. A standard match, 53. Pretty much what you would expect in the undercard. And this was just a decent, regular match. Another new recruit is Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. He makes his way to the WWF and he cuts a promo, which was a 66. And his matchup was against Afa. And it had fantastic heat and decent wrestling with Ricky Steamboat going over Afa in 12.25 with a flying karate chop. So I think a 70 is fairly respectable considering both guys didn't click, so you're going to lose about 5 uh, segment points for that. But I got the crowd hotter again and Ricky Steamboat's getting better at his gimmick. More newbies in, and this one's Jack Briscoe. Unfortunately, Jerry Briscoe is under an exclusive written contract, so we'll keep an eye on him. But about had a decent reaction from the crowd and subpar wrestling. Jack Briscoe picked up the win on Rick Rude in 10.29 by pinfall. A good showcase match for Briscoe, a 62, and Rick Rude, under the tutelage of Bobby Heenan eventually, has got a long way to go. That was a storytelling match, and obviously the other bits of negativeness there, including locker room morale. And of course, Rick Rude for being inexperienced, he's less than a year in the business. Now this story is very, very interesting. Before we get through the matchup, 
So I was basically booking my televised shows in between and I thought, let's give Gino Hernandez a nice little IC title defence against Road Warrior Animal because Hawk's uh, carrying a bit of a knock so I won't be able to really wrestle much. Injury. And they call an audible and Road Warrior Animal becomes Intercontinental Champion. I'm like, shit. And the only thing is, the uh, injury, uh, they put it on Twitter a while ago, was uh, obviously the injury that had been edited into the mod, so um, yeah, he had a two week vacation injury. So basically, I'm on holiday for two weeks, and that's that. So Gino's out for two weeks, he's back now, but I don't want him on the IC title. I mean, he's, got, he's lost it now, so cool, we can build him at the main event. So Road Warrior Animal was champion, so I'm like, right, cool, get to an event, get that title the hell off of him, and get him back into the tag division. So about to have fantastic heat and great wrestling. Larry Zabisco defeats Road Warrior Animal in 1932 by pinfall uh, using a foreign object, meaning Larry Zabisco is your new Intercontinental Champion. So not a match I wanted to put together, but was kind of forced to. A 79 rating for these two gentlemen, with Zabisco just about performing Road Warrior Animal. But the title's got good prestige, and very limited negativity there, which is good. And obviously I'm always going to be penalised for low locker room morale as the 80s and it's a lot of negative still getting five incidents uh, an episode so or a show so aye that's never gonna change so this goal just basically brags the fact he's beat animal and he's the ic champion that was an 82 promo so pretty solid hopefully don't burn the crowd out uh, and then we have a promo hogan's obviously full time now so him dusty and andre cut a promo which was a 71 i really just wanted a case here of Anything that Andre does, have Hogan basically try and get that over this to rub on himself. And that was a six man tag, I think it was a main event as well. And it was about to have fantastic heat and great wrestling. And the team of Andre the Giant, Hulk Hogan, and Dusty Rhodes defeated Bruiser Brody, Gino Hernandez, and Don Morocco in 2050 when Andre the Giant pinned Don Morocco with a body slam. So keeping Andre as the main man. 82 there, because he's now our property, we could probably put the title on him at one point. But uh, yeah, a good victory there in our main event, I think. And yeah, we end the show, sorry, with a heated confrontation between Brody and Andre, because, you know, that would have been phenomenal in the WWF at one point. So they just get broken up by all the wrestlers and the security as we build up to that match, which honestly might be a year in the making away, because I would love that at WrestleMania 1. So we got 79. The pop increase is just in six regions, so we're somehow going to have to go over into the 80s to get our home region over. But we are closing in ever so slightly on that elusive it's, uh, gain in size. I will say as well, uh, there will obviously be a few people that maybe won't be happy with the likes of Brody coming in. Gino was obviously there previously. As much as it is an old, old, old mod for back in the day, like this is just... I don't want to go too realistic with this one, I'll be perfectly honest up front. If we can go a completely different way, it's like, what if Bros or Brody went to the WWF? What if WrestleMania, you know, Inferno Fast can start at the same time, but like, how can we change every WrestleMania? What happens if Hogan doesn't, if the game doesn't get Hogan over, who becomes the main guy? So that's kind of some of the things we're looking to do over the course of this month. We'll jump back to the main screen actually, because I said I was going to check and remind everyone the companies that have taken over. So. We might not make as much of a profit this month, because I think it was like 400k on the, the companies that we did seem to get. Also, yeah, good job I kept that. I, Andre's causing rifts, so basically turning the whole locker room against Kurt Henning. So, yeah, maybe Kurt Henning may get jobbed out and we may have to um, take the title off him. He's our champion, remember? So uh, he'll be gone maybe at one point. So, Tim Heel, Hector Guerrero. Buy rate was 0 0.64, so that's 323,000. I've already spent my user point on diplomacy. So at the moment, it's 1.3 profit. Obviously, that will go way down. You can see the difference already in worker costs because of the amount of written contracts we've put in. But it's a gamble I think it's worth taking. We can cover that with ticket sales. And the fact that now we're getting a good bit of pay-per-view revenue way above any broadcast revenue. That is. I'll, I'll keep an eye on how it goes with broadcast and I think it's really difficult in the future. But it'll come to us, I'll import some if I can. But, uh, monthly wage bill, 704,000. It's a dear game. 
So if we just go to go news. Let's see if we can see what companies we've bought. So let's have a wee quick nosy. WWF. Will this let me know who we've bought? I don't think it's going to. That's everything we've pretty much done that's made the news. That's a bit annoying. I thought it would let me see uh, if we click on WWF with that. Oh, come on. It's not even that long since I've bought them. Companies, there we go. Uh, C State. Nope, that's something that's declared war on us. C State. Uh, New Japan obviously have ended the agreement, so they've declared war on us as well. WWC or Wrestling Council Hostel because we ended that agreement as well. We're going to see who we No, so it's not going to let us know which companies uh, we've bought over. The only way I can maybe find that is actually moving that to there. There's one other one actually. Story type. What's on there? Company news. So I think we did. No, we didn't go for Southern Southeastern Championship Wrestling. They just went out of business themselves. But we did get the IWA, as you can see, they're taken over by them. We took over the World Wrestling Association. So that's the two I've bought over. But the SECW was just there was nobody there. I felt like I wanted to bring in, but we're still. In a position where, in terms of companies, there is still 23 companies running about. We're still in 8th place, but as I say, we are so close to getting to big. The two big companies are both from Japan, all Japan and New Japan. But uh, considering we're, uh, what's mental is my, my sim save, The Watcher, they were like 8 million in debt. And they are 7 months before that, 8 months before that, 13.5 million in the bank. So a wee bit more than us. So that's going to be a, a very, very interesting war. But size-wise, as I say, we need to get to 77, 68, 68, 68, 68. Yeah, we, need the, we even need the southwest, sorry, the 72 and the 56. So if we get southeast up to that 68, uh, we'll, we'll see if we can maybe look to get a better television deal and hopefully get more eyes on the prize. And of course, I've decided to give a lot of people some morale-boosting money. So that costs a bit of money, but... Uh, Aye, Grell Amundsen and Jack Briscoe already not too happy. So that's it for this episode. That was your roundup for March 1984. Hopefully you'll join us for the next episode in April, where hopefully we'll actually have a full roster on the card. But take it easy, enjoy the rest of your day. See you soon. Bye-bye.